Greetings, and welcome to episode 16. In today's episode, we'll be talking about magical thinking, how it's helped, and how it's hurting everything spiritual or religious. We'll also be discussing how it pertains to everything spiritual and religious, and why it's okay to put that line of thought down. All right, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, magical thought. Uh, How to recognize it in your life, first of all. Any line of thought that says the hopes and dreams and faith of conquer everything without any participation on your part other than having faith and dreams and hope. That's magical thinking. And it's good to have faith and it's good to have dreams. I can't go in with you on the hope. I, I, this is how I view hope. Hope is a completely negative item. This is what hope says. Hope says, I already know the outcome and there's no chance of success, but I'm going to keep going anyway. Hope is more detrimental than almost anything you could get thrown at you negatively because you've already given up but you're gonna keep on the good fight no don't give up don't have hope have faith that simple how to, other ways to recognize it in in the spiritual path patience it will all come to you in time no you gotta go out and get it you got to go out and look for it. You've got to you've got to learn it. You've got to it, fight for it, figuratively speaking, because some of these techniques are not easily learned. Because just because you know the technique exists, the way you learned it might be how they learned it, and it was easy for them that way. But for you, it'll be a completely different story. So yeah, there's no just kick back and relax. That's the spiritual path. How about religion? Kick back, relax, do what you like because someone's going to come around and save you. Magical thought. All you have to do is believe. No, 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 no. That is a... It's a fail-safe. Religion came up with a fail-safe and they did it on purpose. Because they knew what they were doing. They uh, they had to have known, even then, because there's nothing new between earth and sky, they had to know back then that saying, you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do this, was just going to make people want to do it more. Thereby creating sinners. Thereby creating all this, this, this collective guilty conscience. And if you don't put that fail-safe that says, if you believe... You're saved. No matter what you do, then all of those people were going to hell. It doesn't work that way. No one's coming around. And even if there were, it is still your responsibility to adhere to your path. It is your responsibility to put in the hard work, to not do the asshat behaviors. And if at the very least, if you don't feel like walking the path, if it's too much work, too much effort, or you just think it's bullshit, at the very least, take responsibility for your actions. Tell the truth. Because at the very least, you didn't double back on yourself. Oh, that wasn't me. I think the universe already knows. It was there when you did it. You can, you can, you're not getting out of it. So, that's the magical thinking. Why the magical thinking? To get people interested in the first place. Because everybody has even the slightest little interest in magic. So, you whip up these tales in a magical sense, in the form of a myth, Instead of telling what actually happened, you whip it up in the form of a myth. Ah, magical thinking. I could get into that. Well, yeah, 
Everyone could get into magic, even a little bit. Where it becomes detrimental is when that magical thinking becomes part of the operating system. And anything that doesn't fit along the lines of magical thinking, that removes you from the hard work, is discounted. I was told there was no hard work. I was told that it would all be taken care of. Some guy's going to come down to the planet and save me later. No, no, no. You have to take responsibility for your actions on this planet. Good, bad, whatever. That way, nobody has to come and save you. That way, you're already taken care of. And all you got to do, you can go meet the guy, sure. But that's all anyone's going to get to do anyway. When you say, hey, take my sins, he's going to say, yeah, all right. <laughs> and you're going to be sitting there wondering why. Because you adhere to that magical thinking that everything's okay as long as I believe it doesn't work that way. I'm not going to carry your weight. I would never ask you to carry my weight. So what you have there, like I said, magical thinking. Very detrimental. How many of these souls are going to be lost simply because when they get to that point and realize that just because they believed in somebody, they're not saved? You were never supposed to worship the teacher. You were supposed to do what he said. But instead, because of the magical thinking, oh, we, none of us can do magic. Look where he's sitting. Because of the pedestal that that magical thinking put those teachers on, suddenly we can't attain it, so we worship the person instead of what they said. What they said is no longer important because you'll never get there anyway. What's the point? Well, if you read what he said, every one of us is supposed to get there. Every one of us. As long as you find the path, start the path, and stay on the path, you'll get there. Eventually. That's just a fact. Well, what about all the magic? It was not magic. It's All of these abilities are, are, are scientifically proven. Jesus walked on water. That's levitation. That's provable. There's people that can levitate now. Levitate objects. Turn water into wine. That one I'm not so sure about, but my uncle did turn 7-Up into champagne once. Not an alcoholic, but it still tasted like champagne. So that could be as simple as alchemy. So the, the rising from the dead, now that, that's a stretch because there's a Bible that they found that's like a thousand years old or twelve hundred years old or whatever that states that Jesus never died and was married and had children. Jesus died of old age, not being not of being crucified. That stuff was just added, and not only was it added, it was taken from other stories, much older stories. So, and our historians give us insight into the, the, the mindset and thinking processes of the people of the, that, that era, of those times. So we can understand where their magical thinking comes from. I can't begin to fathom where the magical thought process comes from all the way back as far as Sumer, or as some would like to argue, Atlantis or Mu. I can't, I can't fathom it. If you view it as magical thinking, if you look at it as science, Perhaps this is, as I said in my previous videos, a path of evolution for the entire species, not just one man, was set here to put us in the right direction. And instead of saying, let's follow his directions, we say, oh, the dude showed up. Oh, yeah, he showed up. He showed up. He showed up. And we spend 2,000 years celebrating that, hey, he showed up. He showed up. He showed up. But nobody remembers what he said. And the people that do remember what he said don't follow what he said. And anyone that dares stand up and say, well, you're wrong. Oh, that person's just going to get burned at the stake. The operating system, in my previous three-part series, I said that the operating system is what's faulty. And that's what's faulty. Because you can read the Bible and get what I get out of it if you 
stop seeing the magic and start seeing the science start seeing that wow it's really a path of evolution because you're not going to be able to levitate until you're that far along you're not going to be able to have a mind to turn water into wine even if it is just alchemy you're, you're not going to be that far along if you just sit there stagnant like a lump on the side of the road with your magical thinking and believing and as long as I believe I'm saved that's it doesn't work that way I live in Arizona I dare you you take your beliefs and your faith you go out in the middle of the desert and see how far that gets you I'm gonna go out in the middle of the desert too but I'm gonna have a backpack full of water beef jerky <laughs> we'll see which one of us makes it <laughs> And that's that's the, the spiritual path. That's life. Science is going to save me. If I eat, I'm good. If I take in fluids, I'm good. And I don't even really need to take in food. I just really need to keep up on the fluids if I'm out in the desert. It'll take many, many years for you to get that far along that you can go out in the desert and it's all good with no food, no water, no shelter. If we believe, no, it does not work that way. And that's not a belief, that's just a knowing. I just, once you get so far, it just hits you that, wow, I need to start doing some work because no one's going to save me but me. No one's got my back but me. No one can walk your path for you. No one can carry your burden for you. And nobody is going to absolve you of your sins but you. Here's one of my sins. Smoking. But I take responsibility for it. I don't pretend some magic guy is going to come down from the sky and say, Hey, you smoked, but it's cool. No, I should quit. And I'm going to. I just haven't quit yet. This is one of those things I was talking about in the last video that it's in there and I'm cool that it's in there, but I'm also cool with that I'm, I want to get rid of it. It no longer serves me. It's not magical thought. If I have faith, God will take it away. No. <laughs> if I decide I'm going to quit, I'll just stop buying them and smoking them. My work, my effort, it's not God's job to perform the actions that get the job done for you. There are 7 billion people on the planet. How fair would that be if he catered to your journey and only your journey? Because that's how much attention he would have to pay to you to make sure you don't ever slip and fall, don't ever make a bad decision, and don't ever go down the wrong road. He would have to focus completely and primarily on you. And what about the rest of us, 7 billion? Take responsibility for your, for your actions. Take responsibility for your journey. No magical thinking. It's infiltrated the spiritual path just as much as it's infiltrated religion. And if you love Jesus like you claim to, how in a million lifetimes could you possibly lay your sins on the back of someone you claim to love? I couldn't lay my sins on my kids. I couldn't lay my sins on my wife. But you can lay them on Jesus. Obviously, you don't really love him. You just love the fact that he existed and he's going to pay the tab. He's going to pay the tab. That's what it is. If life was a, was a restaurant or bar, somebody told you that someone will come around at the end and pay for everybody's tab. Really? Do you really think that's how it's going to happen? Do what you like, buy what you like, eat what you like, drink what you like, someone else is paying. But it's cool because we love them. I'm sorry, when I love somebody, I don't want them reaching into their wallet. I got this. I got this. I don't know how many times my daughters, we take them shopping and they want to buy something and we, we give them their strict guidelines for purchases. Like, 
you have ten dollars so don't buy something that costs ten dollars because then there's taxes involved you know how many times I wanted to just reach in my pocket and give them the rest or give them the extra they want because they didn't have enough to get the bigger one but they need to learn the rules of spending so they'll know it when they get out in the world nobody taught it to me I'm teaching it to them nobody taught it to you I'm teaching it to you no magical thoughts gonna stretch that ten dollar bill into twelve dollars to cover the taxes it just ain't gonna happen well it's okay if I stand here and wait Jesus will come around and pay for it no he won't mom and dad ain't gonna cover the taxes you think Jesus gonna cover the taxes <laughs> You better have more than ten dollars or buy something smaller. <laughs> Take responsibility for your actions. I can do what I want because I'm not perfect. And Jesus said that because he knows you're not. No, 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 no. We all know you're not perfect. Why is it that I'm okay with not being perfect but you're not? It's okay that you're not perfect. You weren't put here to be perfect. You were put here to experience life. And that's what you did. And now you feel guilty for it. But that's okay because Jesus is going to come around and pay for it. What? I went to the bar and they said, don't eat this and don't drink the liquor. And I, I ate that. And I, I had a couple of shots. But Jesus is going to come around and pay for it. No, no, he's not. Pay, pay for your food and your drinks and let's go. We're running out of time. <laughs> but if I pay for the food and the drinks then I'd have to admit that I had the food and the drinks and then oh, yeah. think about what you're saying God won't know until, unless I pay for it so if I make somebody else pay for it that's okay no do you think God doesn't already know you did it pay for your stuff and let's go magical thought and so many people trapped in a negative spiral of guilt a negative spiral of neuroses a negative spiral of of fear negative spiral of just a negative spiral based on magical thinking we'll never be like Jesus so I'm gonna do what I want but I'm gonna feel guilty about it as part of my punishment and then Instead of walking the path and trying to fix it, I'm just going to keep feeling guilty because Jesus is going to come and save us. And our spiritual path is worse because they know that nobody's going to come around and save us. Well, and that's not true. Some people think, well, the fifth and tenth and ninth and twelfth dimensional entities will come down and save us. No, they're not going. Nobody's doing nothing unless you can prove that you're willing to put forth the effort yourself. Why would I be willing to cover the taxes on my daughter's $10 purchase? Because at least she has the $10. Why would I be willing to kick in an extra 5 bucks so she could get the bigger item? Because at least she has the main portion of the balance. If she just walks up and says, Can I get this? The answer is usually no. Well, where's your money? I don't have any. Well, I have a dollar. That's a $20 item. You have a dollar. You, you, you're not even covering the taxes at that point, child. <laughs> you have to be able to prove you can put forth the effort, or now willing to put forth the effort. Put down the magical thinking. See it for what it is. The religion, the spiritual path, all of it. It's just a means by which a species evolves, moves up Jacob's ladder, ascends to the higher realms, whatever you call it that's what these paths are for nobody's gonna do it for you nobody nobody's paying for the trip nobody nobody's paying for your supplies nobody you decided you wanted to join this path the path has a certain cost to it if you don't adhere to your path the, and do what you know you're supposed to be doing, there's a certain cost involved. Nobody's paying for that but you. Jesus didn't walk your path. Jesus, you're going to, hey, Jesus, you got my nachos? Uh, no, I didn't have any nachos. Well, you want me to pay for your nachos? What? <laughs> 
<laughs> That's not how it works. Not how it works at all. No one's paying for your journey. And why would you want them to? Why would you want them to? Our whole society, it seems like, everything in our society is geared toward shifting the blame elsewhere. Shifting the responsibility. Even if you can't shift the blame, it's allowable and legal to shift the responsibility to somebody else. I got into a car wreck because I was drunk, but it's the bartender's fault for serving me drinks. What? No, it's your fault for going and leaving the bar and getting in your car and driving away. I spilled hot coffee on myself. It's not that I'm a klutz. It's that they didn't tell me coffee is hot. You didn't order iced coffee. You ordered hot coffee and then spilled it on yourself. But nobody told you that coffee is hot. Really? That's, that's what you're going to go with. Ignorance. Self-imposed and feigned ignorance. You knew better. But if you can cash in or not get in trouble, I'll take it. Nobody wants to take responsibility for anything. And the whole system is based on that and is designed for that. And like that's what keeps it running. It, it, that's just not the way it is. Not if you're on a spiritual or religious path and following it earnestly. That's not how it works. That's not ever going to be how it works. That magical thought is to the detriment of us all. Because those of you with that magical thinking, that old archaic 2,000 year old operating system are holding the rest of us back. Come on, catch up, pay you for your nachos, and let's go. <laughs> Upgrade that operating system because it's, that old operating system is not compatible with these new programs at all. At all, because there's too many things in the Bible if viewed magically that are not compatible and cannot be reconciled and you'll be left behind because it didn't specifically say gloves you're not gonna wear gloves you're gonna burn your hands or freeze them off that's a magical thought what the Bible said is a magical thought and I believe when I will talk yeah put the goddamn gloves on they ain't gotta say it <laughs> Man, people are just, and they're crazy about it too. I'll go burn down a building, blow up a building, pick at a funeral over some 2,000 year old archaic beliefs. Because that operating system is what you view the world through. Just like your computer. Everything has to be compatible with that operating system or it doesn't get to go on the computer. The same thing works for your subconscious mind. That's your operating system. And until you upgrade it, you're only going to see what you're able to see through those filters. And with 2,000-year-old filters, they had no idea that we were going to figure it out back then. They had no idea that life would be the way it is today. You think if they knew that we were going to have automobiles today, they wouldn't have had them back then? Do you, do you honestly believe that? Do you honestly believe they would have even bothered doing religion the way they did it if they thought for a second we were going to figure it out? I don't think so. Because that's not how man thinks. Man would have found a different way to control the people. And they would have left them to their religion, to their spiritual path. And we would be a much different race right now.
our species would already be where we're supposed to be. Where are we supposed to be? At least. Not only, but at least as far along as Jesus was back then. That's where we're supposed to be. But everyone's so stuck in that magical thinking. No one could ever attain that. Why? Why is that? Why can no one ever attain it when he says right there in the Bible that you can attain it? And that was the whole point of him coming here was to show you how to attain it. But the way it was taught was, those are just words. Listen to me. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Didn't it say in the Bible that if you change the Bible that you're going to go burn in hell? Technically, they didn't change the Bible. They left it in there. They're just telling you it's bullshit. Do what I say. And everyone says, okay. Because he's the computer programmer. <laughs> when Jesus came down and showed you, this is how you build and maintain a, com a, a healthy computer. Jesus was nothing more than God's IT. <laughs> and they killed him for it. <laughs> Anyone that's ever had anything important to say that went against the grain, Anyone actually walking the path and doing their stuff has been killed outright. Just killed. That type of thinking isn't going to work anymore either. Because you, it's going to eventually come to a head and you can't kill us all. And if you do, then you've got really no reason to be in charge because you've got no one to be in charge of. So, who knows? You put down the magical thinking, it becomes science. Because science can validate almost everything in that book. Almost everything in that book. But to see it, you have to change your operating system to allow for the new information, to allow for the new programs to run You'll sit and fight off all this new programming in favor of magical thinking. We're supposed to be moving away from superstition and into enlightenment. And everyone walks around, I'm enlightened. I've reached enlightenment. Oh, yeah. I never trust a person that tells me they've reached enlightenment. Never. That's not something for you to decide. That's something for those that come to you for learning to decide if you're enlightened or not. Just like the magical thinking, you have to be perfect to be a righteous man. And, oh, no. <laughs> you could be an asshole and a sinner and still be a righteous man. You know what it takes to be a righteous man? And this is speaking in terms of the Hebrew Talmud. You know what it takes to be a righteous man? You just have to be... You have to be honest, brutally honest with yourself and everyone around you. That's what a righteous man is. You don't even have to be a nice person. And you can even be a sinner. Because if your word is trustworthy, God will have no problem speaking to or through you. There is not one law that says you have to be a nice person. Because you can be an asshole and still share your food. You can be a sinner and still do nice things for people. It's that magical thinking. Oh, no, no. You can only be righteous if you're kind and generous and perfect. No, nothing could be further from the truth. You'll never get where Jesus was at only because you keep saying that. If you think we're never going to make it, you're right. If you think we're almost there, you're right. And those of you that are further behind, don't drag other people down. If they have new ideas, take a piece, put it under the microscope. Don't just shut it down out of hand and then try and explain to them why they're wrong and talk them into thinking they're wrong. Because they don't follow your old 2,000 year old program. Put it under the microscope. Do some research. 
You'll find it. I guarantee it. It took me a while to put down the magical thinking because I wanted it to be magical. Because I wanted it. That's part of the reason why I started this path. I was going to be a wizard. <laughs> God's bait and switch. Yes, you can be a wizard. Just kidding. <laughs> but then you figure out that wizard is just a derivative term from wisdom and technically I am a wizard I'm just not shooting lightning bolts from my fingertips whatever magical thinking without the magical thinking I am a wizard and there are, I've been told I've read articles and seen documentaries where even shooting the lightning bolts is even possible so and even, but there's a scientific process that goes with that, so it's still not magical thinking. You're just channeling energy, and that falls under the realm of science. So, the Qigong. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, research that, and what you're capable of with that. <laughs> so it's there. All of it's there. All the mythos, all this and that. Tear down the magical thinking, and it's a scientific principle that anyone can achieve through effort, not belief. Oh, I believe. But if you have no effort, I believe that there is power in that cup. I also believe I'm thirsty. But if I don't meet it halfway and get off my ass and go get that cup, I'm not getting any power aid. Fact. Magical thinking means if I believe that I'm thirsty enough, the Powerade will come to me. It will. It can. If you put in the work and learn how to levitate objects, <clears throat> nurtured your telekinesis, yeah, you can bring that cup over here. But that still took effort. It still took work to learn the technique and then use it. It's not belief. Belief alone is magical thinking. Faith alone is magical thinking. And it destroys both the religious and spiritual paths. All right, <laughs> that was a good one. I like this video, not as much as some of my other ones, but it was still a good one. Got me in that in that zone. Oh, yeah, good to go. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you have, go ahead and click the like button. Favorite this video if you want. And if you if you did learn something or you just enjoyed watching it or you just like the sound of my voice? You like to come back and maybe get some more info? Or just come back and hear my voice? <laughs> Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, yeah. We'll see you in the next episode. But until then, you hang in there. <laughs>